happened at Google I.O. Um, two weeks ago. We have a lot of exciting stuff happened then, so we have a lot of cool stuff to discuss. And I um, guess we'll start with introductions. So joining me here in the new um, Google Plus Platform Office Hour Studios, we have? Google Office Hours Worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> yes, Worldwide Studios. Uh, I'm Wolf Thompson. I'm a developer programs engineer. I'm on Google Plus, mostly on Hangouts. Mm -hmm. And I'm Jenny Murphy, a developer programs engineer on Google Plus, and I focus mostly on Publisher and the new Google Plus History API. Hi, I'm Timothy, also developer advocate, or I guess the only developer yeah, advocate. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, working on Google Plus. Great. And, and, and can I just say I'm so excited to be here? It's good to have you here, Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. I haven't done one of these. Look, we're on TV. Yeah. Hi, TV. Hi, everyone. <laughs> But the introductions don't stop there, because people are joining us through the magic of the internet. And in no particular order, um, if you guys like to introduce yourselves. Um, I think they should be in, in display index order. The display index is different for different people, though. Depends My on display index order. So the yes. order on our screen that we're looking at right now, starting with you, Abraham. Hi, I'm Abraham Williams. I uh, have a new startup called Advocate. I'm based in San Francisco. and. Um, I've been exploring the History API a lot recently, and there's actually on my YouTube channel, there's a, about an hour presentation I gave at um, IO Hack last weekend if uh, anybody is interested in learning more about the History API. Cool. And as far as my screen can tell, next to you is Alan. Hey, guys. Hi, Alan. Oh. You're muted, Alan. Up oh, and then um, just joining us, uh, Charles. <laughs> and uh, a developer who just commented on the post and I just invited. I actually don't know, know how to, I'm going to butcher your name. Uh, Diwa? Yeah, hi. hi. You got it right. Oh, awesome. Cool. And continuing oh. along, um, Fraser? Hi, everybody. I'm Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today. We'll be doing cool hangouts with telescopes here in Google Plus. And definitely last but not least, Gerwin. Yeah, hi. I'm Gavin from Austria. I'm developer of Hangout, hangout Comment Tracker, and I'm really looking forward to what people will do with the new APIs or what I will do with them. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Great. So, um, well, this show is about. Google I.O. It was a great event, and a lot of you, a lot of people who, who are here with us, actually attended the event or were involved in some other way. So I thought we'd just get started by um, just going around and saying some of the, you know, the, the things you enjoyed about Google I.O. or that you thought were pretty cool that happened there. So. It was nice to meet all these people in real life for a change. Good to meet Alan and uh, Abraham and uh, Garen and you. Yes, or as we, we often call it, hang out in real life or hurl. hurl. Um, hurl. It was great to hurl with, with, with a bunch of you. It was a great opportunity. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I liked the continued verification of existence. We're yeah. all real. That's yes, neat. we're not just elaborate <laughs> Google automatons. Well, right? I, I and, am. And, and, and the developers, right? There's, there's real people out there that are also not automatons, automatons. I never uh, thought they were, I never tons. thought they were automatons. Really? That was only was, you. I think really? if you guys yeah. were automatons, you guys would be more manga anyways. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm working on combing my hair up, and Jenny does have green hair, and he has blue hair, so I think we're pretty freaking manga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't you find that a year of Google Plus has totally kind of changed your interaction with with the people who use the Google products and services, that you know, I mean, a year ago I didn't know the names of very many Googlers. Now, I, you know, I probably know the name of twenty people in Google. So it's kind of thanks to Google Plus, right? That's cool. You know, I've I've noticed that as well. Is that um, when we were doing developer relations prior to Google Plus, it, it did seem like there was a forum between us and everyone. And like we still have that form, it has a great use. But now we can sit face to face with people and talk about developer issues in a really casual setting, much like we do when we uh, travel and do events. And I think that's pretty cool to be able to do that so casually and easily whenever we want. 
I, I, I'll bet you that's going to be one of the unexpected benefits of this for Google itself. You guys weren't anticipating this, but just how much direct connection the people in Google are going to have with the, the people who use Google services at, at various levels and how much sort of relationships are actually happening with the inside the company and outside the company. You know, bef words. right before we launched uh, Google Plus, we were dog fooding Hangouts all the time, for example, and we had a pretty good idea how big of a deal this was going to be. I mean, it's just all it took were like a couple drunk Hangouts on a Friday night to realize <laughs> that this was more than just another feature, right? That this something this was something that was going to really allow us to connect with people. Uh, the way it was allowing us to connect with each other in ways that we hadn't before. Mm -hmm. But I, I think Google Plus had the unexpected uh, thing, at least to me, that uh, it really helped us uh, because of the circles and everything. Sorted uh, some of our users, some of my my Google Plus uh, followers and people I'm following into uh, interest categories. So I now have a whole pile of people who are comic artists. I have a mm -hmm. whole pile of people who are, you know, astronomers and things like that. And so I can follow these people and 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 learn about them and join Hangouts with people I haven't, I don't know but who turn out to be really cool, rather than just hanging out with people I know, which I think is really fun, like you guys. Uh, so in answer to your question originally, what did we all get out of I.O.? Um, on the plane ride back, I had all these ideas. I think the thing that I got most out of it was that I got to go to, I went to a bunch of different sessions on a bunch of different AP APIs, ones that I had been using and ones that I'd been using kind of peripherally, and I spent a lot of time talking to people, and I kind of got it all mashed up in my head. And on the plane ride home, I realized I had a couple clients who could really, really use a bunch of tools that i had been thinking about that we've been discussing. Uh, one in particular is a, a charity that works in Zambia. And for them, it's a perfect fit of connecting together all these different free services for them to reach their audiences and to, well, you guys know that I've just gone through, we've just gone through the Kickstarter project Mm -hmm. So I'm all big on raising funds right now. So it was, it was amazing to just have all the, those ideas in my head. And I think being in a sling and being unable to do much actual detailed coding kept my head up in the clouds and let me, let me see the big picture, which was really, really handy. I think Google's got so many different tools that if they're mated properly, you can make some really powerful stuff. Very cool. Well, um... I, if I could just say, I, I love that kind of experience coming out of something like Google I.O., right? Because I think a lot of people go for the sessions, which are, you know, uh, History API or Hangout apps or what, what, whatever it is. But then it's that kind of extra experience you get mm -hmm. at something like Google I.O. when everything sort of comes together or the conversations you have in the hallway that, that I think really make it. And one of the things that I noticed at, at our uh, Google Plus booth is that the office hours were, there were always people around hanging out, asking questions. Um, and in those couches that we provide as well, just like sitting down every once in a while coding or like coming up with new ideas with people. Is, is that what you all experienced as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's definitely a difference just to watch the sessions on YouTube uh, compared to actually being there and being able to talk to people after the sessions and comparing what you experienced. And so it's, to, it's just a totally different free feeling than just attending the sessions. Yeah, I, I ended up uh, uh, spending uh, the entire day in the sandbox just answering questions. Like, I wasn't, cool. wasn't supposed to be there the entire time, but I just was having so much fun talking to people <laughs> <laughs> that I ended up just hanging out and occasionally drawing dinosaurs. But, you know, you got to do that. At least we have to do that. Well, yeah, I was going to say, G Plus has to have dinosaurs or we, we don't function correctly. So if you guys are interested, I think one of my astronomers has a live view of this monster sunspot on the sun right now. So if you want, we could invite him and he could sort of be in the side of the, uh, the hangout if you're interested. Or I might have to drop out and, <laughs> and work with him, but just want to give you that option. Sure, that, that's definitely... I, I think I think having a sunspot join our hangout would be pretty cool. Yes, I think we all <laughs> agree with that. You know, it's like, like, like hangouts are sort of an international phenomenon and apparently also an intersolar <laughs> phenomenon as well. All right, I, I'll, give him the, I'll give him the link, but I'll tell him to, to come in muted, so yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, we, we don't want, we don't want to hear a sunspot. We just want to see it. <laughs> just see it. I'll see what I can do. Cool. Awesome. What's next, Jenny? Well, what's next? Funny you should have mentioned the history API just a moment before. Oh, my goodness. Tell yes. us more. Because <laughs> I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk a little bit about um, one of the big features we launched at Google I.O., um, which we launched in the developer preview. 
um, which is called the History API. So, um, mind if I hold your phone for a sec? I just realized there's a prop right here, Timothy's phone, which he's never let me hold before. Don't turn it on. I won't. It might explode. <laughs> but there's a really cool Google Plus feature that a lot of people have used. It's called Instant Upload. And as you're at um, events, you take a lot of photos of your adventure. Um, and what's happening is in the background, your, your phone is uploading photos. Well, as you take them to Google Plus, so that later, when um, so that later when you are back at home, in a mood for sharing, you have instantly accessible uh, all those photos that you took, so that you can share them with the right audiences. And what this is the kind of one of the philosophical cores of this is we've separated out the burden of creating the content and the experiences you've had with the the sharing um, you do later on when you're in in the right mood for that. We thought this was a really cool feature, and we got a lot of great feedback from people. So we decided to expand it um, to include not just photographs, but everything that happens, all of those little moments that make up people using applications, applications that you write. And we also decided to open it up to everyone. So it's an, it's an open API for um, application developers. And um, that is the, the idea behind the history API. It is just entering developer preview. Um, and what this means is that it's not ready for release into your products yet. So your application, um, you can't release it with the history API yet. But you can start banging on the APIs today to experiment with how you how you'd use it. Um, and really importantly to us, you can give us feedback for how you want the API to be when it's ready um, for production release. So it's a really good opportunity for you as application developers to have a lot of influence on the direction of an API as we're developing it. So we're very excited about this. So I am going to show you a quick demo of the history API in action through the magic of screen sharing. Cool. So let me switch the cameras on over. Actually, that one's already toggled to me. Sweet screen sharing to my web browser. the right window is up. So here we have it. This is a simple example application that we created so that you can start developing um, right away. Um, it has uh, another feature that's part of the same developer preview called the sign-in button which is really useful for authenticating um, users. It makes OAuth, which is a really cool standard for accessing um, data um, that your users have created on Google, um, it makes the OAuth connection process a whole lot easier. So I'll go ahead and hit the button. And authentication flow happens. And then this um, sample application has a bunch of different activity types, which are used to represent the different kinds of moments an application could create, like an application you're writing. Um, into moments that the history API can understand. So since it's just a bunch of buttons in a panel, they should probably be called push button activity, but um, they're just proxies for other kinds of activities that could exist. For example, right here in the upper right is a button called check-in activity that simulates checking in with a location-aware application. So I hit the button, and I can see um, API traffic down in the little debugging panel. And what's happened here is this little JavaScript application has pretended to communicate a moment about me checking in to the Googleplex, which is actually accurate, because it's where I actually happen to be right now. And we can see this moment inserted into Google+. So switching tabs over, I can see Google our plus.google.com slash history, which is a feature made available to you as part of the developer preview. Um, so you can see that the moments have been inserted into your Google Plus history. Here I can see the moment that I just inserted um, with a picture of me at an earlier time checking in at some other place in the Google Plex. And the History API is about a lot more than just um, check-ins. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of moments that your application can create. You can use it to model moments like when someone buys something, like a book 
or um, a movie or something like that. When someone creates content, like creates a blog post or a tweet. When someone reviews a restaurant, for example, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And for now, we even have kind of a catch-all activity called ad activity, which you can use when no other activity is appropriate for the kind of action your user is taking in your application. And this list is one of the big areas we're interested in expanding. So as you develop and play around with this API, please tell us what kinds of other activities you think would make the API more useful to you and your application and your users. So, Jenny, what, Jenny, what's the best way to provide that kind of feedback to you? That's a great question, Alan. I'm just about to show you. So <laughs> let me switch over to the, the last tab, where I'll show you how to, to learn a little bit more about the History API and how to give feedback, like how to create a new acti or tell us what kind of activity types you might want. So before um, I dig into the, the places where you can send us feedback, let me just show you how you can sign up. So if you go to developers.google.com slash plus sign slash history, you'll find all the documentation on the history API. This includes that sample project I just showed you. You can download it and start modifying it. Reference docs, all everything you need to get started with the developer preview. And the top link in the left side menu is uh, how to sign up for the preview. So what you will do is you'll come here and you'll enter your email address into this form and we will add you to a Google group. That Being a member of that Google group will give you access to the ability to create projects that use this API. It will allow you to submit moments for your user, your profile, and it will also give you access to that plus.google.com slash history beta UI I showed you just a moment ago. Once you're signed up, you can download one of the, the projects, like the one I just demoed to you, um, and learn a whole bunch of details about the API um, and the different kinds of moments you can send on our reference docs. And down at the bottom of our reference docs is instructions on how to request a new type of moment. Um, we're using our issue tracker for this. Um, and this is the same place where you would submit feedback on any other changes or ideas you have for the history API. So. You just click on over to that and create a new issue. And this is how you would go ahead and, and send us that feedback. And that is History API in a nutshell. So let me kill the screen sharing so we can discuss it a bit. Hi. Do you all have questions about the History API? Have you started using the History API for anything in particular? Well, the um, an I/O hack at last weekend after Google I/O it was um, is that mastery and sponsored by the GDGSF. Um, um, the the weekend project I did there was actually doing a little app engine aggregator that um, initially it pulled in uh, GitHub activity, um, I can't has cheeseburger activity, Twitter activity, and something else. And it pushed that all into um, the history API, and it was actually it, it turned out pretty cool. I'm working on open sourcing it. I have to like you know make it so the secrets aren't hard coded and whatnot. But um, it was it was pretty fun. Um, there was a couple of issues like you know the, there was conflicts with scopes, so like only you couldn't use any other scopes with the history scope, um, and. So that kind of like mm -hmm. threw a wrench in some of the debugging because you try to, mm -hmm. you know, if you wanted to access to somebody's email address, then you couldn't do that unless you had them authorized twice. But other than that, actually, the uh, the developer experience was pretty nice. It was it was a little difficult explaining it to some people because they'd be like, so if I put all my history in there, then what can I do with it? And I'd be like, well, it's a preview, so give Google a little more time. But um, <laughs> other than that, it's a lot of fun. We're working on that part. Yeah. yeah. This is another area where, where feedback from you as you develop your application is really useful mm -hmm. to us. Um, what, what are your visions for um, what we can do with all that information that's been loaded into the history? Are people seeing this as a way to get around the no write access on the API to like be able to queue up things that they would want to be able to then bring into their feed? It's important not to think of this as a way to get around it, but maybe a better way to do it in most cases, right? Uh, and the problem with sort of a 
uh, right API is then developers might just push a whole bunch of data into your stream. And that's not really good for the user that's, that's apparently producing that content or the users that are reading that content. But with history, you can put all sorts of data into this private area. And then the user can keep that just for themselves, right? which you couldn't get with just a basic write API. Um, and then they get to choose what they do want to share and with who, which is a very Google plus -y way to do things. right? It's, the, it's that natural sharing that we've been going on about for a year now, whereas the, there's some things I want to share with my family, and there's some things I want to share with my friends, and there's some things that I just want to keep for myself. Right, so you see it as a sort of like, you know, I will, or over time, there will be a whole bunch of these apps that I will be connecting up into the History API. They will be dropping things like photographs, videos, or other pieces of data, songs I've listened to, whatever, and then I'll be able to uh, control which of those actually get pushed down into the feed, as opposed to another site, perhaps, that does it in a very invasive and creepy way. I think that, that would be that a would way be to put ideal. it, yes. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Perfect. Hey, before before we get to the next question, I would just like to take a moment uh, to ask the sun, how are you? <laughs> so this is so uh, this is Chris Ridgeway, who's you're in Indiana, right, Chris? Right. Yeah, and uh, and so this is actually a monster sunspot that's currently on the moon right now. I'm oh, sorry, on the sun right now. Um, oh man, what's this number? A AR-1520. <clears throat> AR-1520, which is actually one of the largest sunspots that's been on the surface of the sun in a couple of years now. And it's actually just rotating to perhaps shoot a flare or two off at the Earth. And so we might get some auroras at... Oh, well, let's keep an eye on that. Sense. Yeah. So if it, if it happens to do that during the Hangout, that would be pretty cool. That would be okay. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think Chris has the right filters on his, uh, on his scope to be able to detect it. We'd need a, uh, an X-ray telescope working. But. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning so much just by staring at these blurry spots. Are they, are they, uh, is, is, why do they appear blurry? Can I just ask that one astronomy question of you? Why do the sunspots appear well, blurry? Yeah. They seem well, the sunspots are darker. Well, the, the, the sun, you're seeing the sun through the atmosphere, and the sun is, the, you're seeing the, the atmosphere kind of wobbling back and forth. Okay. And so that's why this, you're seeing things kind of blur. It's in it's video of the sun seen through the atmosphere that and the atmosphere so cool. distorts the uh, distorts the sun. The sunspots themselves are actually they're still super hot. They're still 5000 degrees Kelvin, but they're a little cooler than the rest of the sun and that's why they're a little bit darker. And they're actually the points of the so of the solar atmosphere where the magnetic field lines uh, from inside the sun are poking outside of the sun. And so usually there's matched pairs where these, these magnetic field lines are piercing the surface of the sun and coming back down. And what happens is these lines will get all twisted up and tangled and then they kind of snap and that's when we get these flares that come off the surface of the sun. Very well, cool. okay then. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for that explanation. I really appreciate yeah. it. All right. I think so the first time I've ever had that properly explained to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we do every Sunday night. This is our virtual star party. So I thought I'd give you guys. No, a this is this is totally awesome. Yeah. I, 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 we should invite the sun to all of our hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it has to be the moon or Saturn. Yeah. I, I would I would be fine with a different celestial body every week. Yeah. <laughs> Not Pluto, no. That that guy's fallen off. We I need know. a really powerful telescope. Hey, if we're gonna accept the moon, we gotta accept Pluto every once in a while. No, he I used think, to be. I think cool. this is a feature request for Google Effects. <laughs> is to add Pluto. <laughs> we, we need to have a t telescope strong enough to see Pluto clearly. We'll work on that. Uh, we could do that. <laughs> All right, so before we move on to the next thing, any other sort of questions and comments about the the history API? Yeah, I've got uh, two quick questions. The first is kind of directed at Wolf. Um, during the, the code lab there, we were having some problems getting uh, history working with Hangouts. Uh, is there any any further word on that? So uh, the, the issue that uh, Abraham was talking about earlier was with the scopes, the history scope not getting along with other scopes. That was a, that's, a, that's a broad problem with uh, all of that Hangout. Uh, with you know, hangout scopes are just other scopes. So that was the disagreement that was happening there. So I think when that issue is cleared up, uh, the hangouts one will get resolved as well. I don't know what the what the ETA is on. It's one of our top priorities right now. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was it was a it was a it was a specific case of a generic problem. <laughs> okay. 
The, the second is a question that I've been asked a couple of times now, if pages will be able to um, add to their own history, uh, and will there be a way to do that as part of the developer preview? Uh, it is not available now. And the preview is on right now, so I, I don't think you can expect that um, anytime s terribly soon. But uh, yeah, it's a question that, that, that was asked at Google I.O., and we've been thinking about it, but we don't have an answer right now. That would be really useful to have. Do you see? Do you have any plans for any differences between the history between um, personal pages and brand pages? So I, I think that's sort of the same question. And, and it, it, at the end of the day, the, where it is right now is Google Plus history is available for profiles, and it's not available for Google Plus pages. And there, there's a number of both technical and sort of conceptual issues to sort out before we would make any other change there. And uh, as I understand it, the product team doesn't have anything to announce yet. Cool. So um, before we move on to the next thing, does anyone have any other comments or questions about history? Great. OK. What's the next thing? Well. Next thing. <laughs> next thing. Um, I see that uh, Diwa has been patiently waiting. Um, you commented on the uh, announcement post, mentioning you had a question, um, which we'll, we'll do our best to answer. Well, well, you guys seem so advanced. I'm just a newbie web programmer. It'll probably be boring to everybody else. Oh, well, what's mm. your question? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can what? hear you loud and clear. Oh, I'm, I'm just starting out with, with my web app, which uses Google+. Plus, and one of the things I'm trying to figure out is, is there a difference between using the Google's own client like for Ruby versus Amia? So, so I'm, I'm not sure what the I'm, difference is. I'm not all that familiar with Omni app, oh. but we recommend, we produce client libraries for several languages that we strongly recommend you use because we can um, take more, um, we can put a lot more effort, and we have a lot more control over them, so we can put more effort into making sure that they are very compatible with our APIs, especially mm -hmm. as our APIs change and new features come out, which could, for example, provide performance enhancements. Just we can that. integrate that into our API client libraries much faster than a lot of um, third parties might be able to. Mm -hmm. So all that being said, all of our APIs are RESTful web services um, and use other internet standards like O-authentication. And that means that you can use the endpoints directly if you wish, if you have a strong reason to, or if there's another client library that just makes more sense for your application for whatever reason. Maybe it integrates better with some other frameworks for you, you use or something like that. You are welcome to go ahead and use them. Um, mm -hmm. Just be aware that they may not be as performant. They may not take advantage of all the advanced features we have, like, for example, e-tags, or they may not respect cache headers. Um, mm -hmm. And also, uh, it's a little bit more difficult for us to support if um, support you if you're using a client library that we're not as familiar with. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I would yeah. take a look at the features of both and just see the one that it's, it's better um, for your application. Um, mm -hmm. And if in doubt, use our library, especially Always. the Ruby one. It's really cool, <laughs> right, Wolf? Definitely, I like the Ruby library. And yeah, I'm not just a <laughs> I'm not just a, uh, I'm not just <laughs> a developer. I'm also a client. No yes. Way. Yes, Wolf and I have both uh, spent some time with that client yeah. library. Thanks. The second question I had is that if I'm trying to store the refresh tokens in my local database, like I'm trying to decide which one would be better to index it by, whether the email of the user or the Google Plus handle or the ID. Do you guys have any input on that? That's a, a Another really good question, um, and it's it's a what is the, the unique identifier of the person? And mm. we recommend that you use the profile, the numeric profile ID. Although although you should not assume that it will stay a twenty digit number or whatever it is right now. Uh, oh, okay. That that is the IDs are strings, and they should mm -hmm. you should treat them as strings. Okay. Very, but, very specifically, you'll notice that the current numeric ID is just slightly too large to fit in a lot of integer representations. So it may okay. unexpectedly overflow those representations right. today. <laughs> so, so treat it as a string, please. An yes, opaque absolutely string. as a string. Yes. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Those are some great questions. 
So. Okay. Um, so let's talk about Hangouts. Yeah. So uh, we were releasing, releasing. We were featuring a whole new set of apps that uh, came out near or around I/O. Uh, uh, the ones we talked about in the session with the Google Art project, which we're really excited about. Uh, it's it's all of these beautiful high res scans of, of worldwide art, um, uh, famous paintings, nearly famous paintings, paintings that should be famous, uh, <laughs> sculpture, all that stuff, all uh, in a way that you can actually kind of hunt through the hunt through our database, uh, share it with friend, share it with friends, and you can go on virtual tours with each other. Uh, you know, uh, so you can really have a shared museum experience while you're in a hangout. Uh, and we're really looking forward to people coming up with fun things to do with that. Um, I think we, I, I, I had a lot of fun coming up with amusing keywords to send into the, <laughs> into it to see what I can come up with. I particularly liked uh, Pirate Isle. Turns out to have a really cool pirate, uh, a bunch of pirates uh, left over from some old pa painting, which I thought was neat. Um, but uh, some of the detail on some of the scans is ridiculous. You can get all the way in and like see individual brush strokes. And with the with the hangout functionality, we actually have the the ability to uh, drag other people into that same level of detail and look at the same pieces of, of information at the same time. Really excited about it. We also had story before bed, which is great if you're talking to kids. Uh, and uh, one of my favorites is the mini clip eight ball pool, which. Is turns out to be really fun. I, uh, I we we got together and played a whole bunch of games uh, right before uh, it launched, uh, and we had a lot of people playing all at the same time. One of the things that was neat is that the audio from the game was actually leaking into the hangout, so it sort of felt like you were actually in a pool hall. You could hear all the balls clicking against each other. <laughs> and everything. It was an it was an unexpected benefit that uh, we really liked. Um, it's a it's a very tight game. It's a lot of fun. You should try it. Um, and uh, we also had. Uh, I mean, we have a couple of other games. There's a uh, or games, a couple of other apps uh, like Symphonical and the Panoramio. Um, at the, I think there was a lot of excitement. Uh, we actually had our partners there, uh, Goko, who had uh, Dominion in a hangout. And those of you who are gamers know that Dominion's a, a very popular card game. Um, maybe a little nerdy, but. <laughs> But it's an amazingly fun game, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, seeing that out. Um, but it was playable at I.O., uh, and there's a screenshot. It was reshared widely. It was neat. Um, it's cool. That integration was really neat to see. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they have a lot of fun little details, like if you, if you click on the... Uh, uh, if you click on the... the or if you, uh, when you buy certain things, they actually have overlays that appear on you while you're doing it. So if you buy gold, you get like little gold coins over your eyes. If you buy <laughs> jack-of-all-trades, you get his big hat and everything. And the funny thing about that is, not only is it fun just to see the things, it's actually really useful because you can kind of, while people are playing, uh, especially if you turn the animation speed up because you know, you know how to play the game, you can actually track people by what they're buying by looking at their, <laughs> at their, <laughs> at their faces as they're playing. Really fun. Um, the uh, and we had our code lab, uh, and the code lab is neat. Uh, some of you were there. Uh, it it addressed the thing that I thought was very important about playing uh, or when you're watching like space fiction, which is that whenever the two ships kind of arrive in space, and one of them says on screen, and you know it shows the other guy, they, they're in a hangout right in that very minute. <laughs> they're actually they're actually talking to each other. And so I, 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 want, uh, I, I wanted to build the, uh, or ha rather have people build the software that you would need on a bridge of a ship to have everybody talk to each other. So that was the, that was the, the goal. Um, it's neat. We're hopefully going to get it up for everybody at some point in the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was, that was Hangouts at I.O. Cool. And so, um do we have uh, questions? Yeah. Questions, uh, comments that? from the from the our friends in Hangouts. All questions on Hangouts have already been addressed. Well, a lot of them were there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. we answered a lot of questions. Um, I'm still amazed by the sunspot. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that was definitely an accomplishment unlocked. Uh, having been in a Hangout with a celestial body. I was going to say, with a star. With a star. Yeah. Yes. It's a really big a thing to have star. in a hangout. I think I need to save this moment to my history. 
And full oh. circle. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, we have a few minutes left, so I thought I'd address some of the questions that I'm seeing on the comments thread. Very cool. So, Sid asks, is there any desire for history to work with Gmail in the future? We already have Google account reports. Um, what is the an anticipated integration um, going to look like? And this is a lot of this is an example of uh, some of the kinds of feedback we're interested in hearing. So, in addition to the feedback about how you, as a developer, would like to integrate with the History API, we would also very much like to hear how you think we should use the History API internally to communicate between other, you know, different applications that you use at Google. So, just just tell us what you think it would be like, um, and just just let us know. If you were here, you could tell us in person right now. <laughs> maybe next time. Plus mentions and forum <laughs> comments are a great mm -hmm. way to get that information to us. Yes. Yes. We'll see that. Cool. Let me look at the thread. Um, not seeing any other um, questions uh, that are that developer-y on the thread right now. So does anyone have any final thoughts before we wrap it up for the week? I've got a couple of quick questions. Uh, one for, for uh, I guess, for, for Gerwin, or for Gerwin's sake, which is right now Gerwin's uh, comment tracker doesn't work with events. and so Oh, it does now. Oh, it does now? Never mind. It does <laughs> now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gerwin's all okay. of that. Um, OK. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I've been getting a lot of people complaining from other countries, certain European countries, <laughs> that they can't partake in our live events. Any sort of information I can give them? So you're asking about uh, release timelines globally for product features? No, uh, people in Germany can't access Hangouts on Air. Yeah, that's okay. what I said. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, nobody at this table, uh, I, I don't, unless you guys correct me, knows. No, I when think I don't know is the, the correct answer to this yeah. question. Okay. And, and in, in general, uh, we, we um, especially as DevRel, don't comment on future releases, right? And and so the, the point at which you know product is ready to announce anything is, is when they let us know. And and of course, uh, we understand that that's a concern and have communicated yeah. that to the team. <laughs> yeah. No workarounds. They okay. All right. My big question I asked when I was when I was there, the, the history, the moment seemed really great in for Hurl. Uh, for us in our in our app, because it's a gaming app, we want to screen capture moments inside the Hangout. And so we could do we could use HTML5 to grab most of the, the DOM, but we can't grab the video or the mm -hmm. thumbnail or the, the film strip, which is really the key. That's, and that's for us, it's that moment you know where somebody really blows a roll or somebody really succeeds. Yeah, you well, you want that the reaction phase. <gasps> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and we want that just to get caught because you can't catch that manually. But those are the moments, right? That those are the moments. Yeah, that that that's excellent feedback. Uh, uh, I think again, that's a that's a future looking sort of thing. But um, yeah, capturing moments in Hangouts that'd be cool. Yeah, it would be especially that that the bad dice roll moment it would be pretty cool. Yeah, in uh, uh, in the foosball game that uh, one of the agencies made, they had uh, they had every time somebody scored, they actually popped up an overlay that was the person who had just been scored on, so you ah, could see nice. their face going oh, <laughs> 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 which which was again surprisingly fun. <laughs> You could almost build it in automatically, like you know, like a roller coaster. You know, when you go past a certain point on the roller coaster and it catches a picture of everybody, you know, every time a bad die roll, you just automatically. Yeah, picture, yeah. Right? you just begin. You begin. Uh, uh, yeah, you begin screenshotting as soon as that happens. That yeah. <laughs> most games could program programmatically predict the the moments. Yeah, when all the sad faces are going to happen. All yeah, it, yeah it, has to, it has to watch the chat and everything. <laughs> Got it. Cool. Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, actually, there was uh, that, many that, years. Oh, sorry. Many years ago, there was an MIT Media Lab project where they had a uh, uh, a thing that would capture thirty seconds of video whenever your heart rate went up. Um, and so the example video they had was this woman hunched over this computer, and this guy comes up behind her and goes "boo," <gasps> and then you can see the <laughs> you can see the video of her looking surprised. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> yes. So yeah, the, the possibilities are endless with yes. biometric integration into Hangouts yeah. and history. I had I had one more question, but maybe this you know I can, mm -hmm. I get the feeling that all my questions all got answered by all the people that were actually at I/O, but. Uh, 
um, which so was next year you got to come to I O. Yeah, I know, yeah. clearly. Um, but uh, like right now, I'm only able to run one Hangout app at a time, right? Um, yeah, um, that's not entirely true. Uh, you can run uh, an extension and a Hangout app at the same time. Yes, yes, one of each. Yes. Is there are there any plans to figure out a way that I could? Not do that, or do more. How can I have the lower third and the comment tracker? That's really well, the key. Uh, yeah. Um, the answer to oh, wait, that wait, is that's it. I just lost my microphone. Yes. So the answer is I'm so surprised my microphone okay. fell off. All right, we got. Okay. We're unfortunately running out of time, so we'll answer this pretty briefly. Um, again, this is uh, a future feature. Um, we can't really talk a lot, or we can't really comment on it because we don't know. Um, and so you're aware it's an issue that we are multiple apps and extensions at the same time will create a very rich video experience. Exactly. Mul and, multiple um, extensions. We think it would be really cool. Uh, it's, there's a lot of issues we'd have to overcome to get mm. something like that implemented. It's on our radar. Um, we think it would be cool. And that's all I really have to say about that. <laughs> yes. So um, we are actually completely out of time. We're, so being, we're being waved at. Until yes, we're being waved at. Time is up. So we are going to be leaving you now. Thank, thanks so much for coming, everybody. Yes, thanks a lot for mm -hmm. joining us for this week's session of the Google Plus Platform Office Hours. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.